We are at war. We have been for an inconceivable amount of time. But this war is the most difficult thing to see and comprehend, because even though it is everywhere and in everything, it remains hidden. How can this be? How can everyone be completely oblivious to something that is so obvious? One can be sitting outside on a beautiful sunny day, feeling joyous and perceiving that things are perfectly fine. And yet, an infinite battle rages on all around them. How can this be? There are no guns blasting, tanks rolling through the streets, bombs going off, buildings being destroyed. The mind reasons out. Sure, that stuff might be going on in some places, but it's not happening where I am. I'm free, and my country and its military is taking care of me. It's protecting me from all of that. One remains completely blind. The real war that is going on cannot be seen. Its battleground is in the silence, yet its symptoms and consequences are rendered everywhere in the external. Selfishness and egotistical logic keeps an individual tethered to positions of perception, and in these positions there can psychologically be manufactured a temporary place of illusionary security where one feels assured that they've got everything figured out and can then carry onward and forward with their existence and not be concerned about the inevitable. What inevitability? That's the root question which should be the only thing of importance to absolutely everyone. And yet, this inevitability is ignored or glossed over with false beliefs to quell the fears that one has about its direct impact upon every single one of us. Fictional assumptions that keeps one focusing on absurdities, inane concerns, pointless entertainment, and pursuits that ultimately lead nowhere. They lead nowhere because that is exactly who and what this war is all about. It is a war against death itself. It is death that keeps each of us chained to its grip, forcing us all to be its slaves, while simultaneously doing everything it can to keep us attached to its realm, believing in its divisive pleasures and vacuous constructs. In its desperation at this point in the repetitive time loop, it is once again currently doing everything in its power to keep its illusion alive by destroying all of creation to prop up fictional lifestyles of excess comfort endless technological progress, and the controlled and intelligently directed evolution of the human form. This is all a ruse, though, since death is always running out of time, because death is time. This is seen on the microcosmic individual scale, whereby every individual is running out of time to be eaten again by death, and this is now coming to fruition on the macrocosmic level, where the construct of death itself has once again gotten to the last minute on its own clock before it must harvest itself. The snake must collapse its entire house of cards, which beyond unfortunately means that in doing this, it simultaneously eats all of its human children, which believe in its ridiculous vision and way of doing things. Time is the mind that we are all burdened with, which is the false crown that has brought each of us into its dark circus of hell. Those who perceive that this reality is just us heaven in experience are more wrong than can ever be imagined. Death is not something that is to be celebrated. How many false gurus and philosophical sages espouse that everything is taken care of? One doesn't have to be concerned in the slightest about death. Don't change anything, don't question the efficacy of this entire place, 
Just live your life in the exact way that you personally desire, concentrating only on self-reflections and personal gains. Again, this is the very basis of the satanic doctrine. Do what thou wilt. Hearing this enrages the individual that has taken sanctuary as a slave within their self-importance. In knowing at a deep level the incredible difficulty of changing the ever-recurring situation, one continues the charade in the hope that it numbs the pain and blockades the truth, even temporarily. It is easy to see why the petty tyrant called death has run out of time, because the mind creates reflections of itself in the external. Not as a judgment, but as an observation of the construct, those who might be called preppers are building up large inventories of food and supplies to maintain their bodily existence for the coming great collapse of this entire false empire. And when death consumes humanity during its harvest, it does this to stock up a huge inventory of food to maintain its existence. Its fear is the same fear felt by the individual doing this. Its mind, which is the mind of humanity, is simply reflecting itself. It preps, so you prep. As above, so below. The symptoms are everywhere and in everything, and those who think that science and technological progress are going to save the day are clinging just as desperately as the mind is to its house of horrors. Resources are dwindling, supply chains are collapsing, economies are hanging on by a thread. There is unrest and weariness everywhere. Homelessness, drug abuse, and depression is rampant. Irrationality in the extremes of psychological absurdity and the celebration of the perverse have become normalized, rationalized, and even being treated as sacred. Tenets to be proud of. The social structure in its entirety is being held together by the flimsiest of foundations. Many of the former narratives are no longer working. Yet in tandem with this is the belief that many still have in maintaining this way of life by propping up the concept of nationalistic freedom through the insertion of nihilistic and narcissistic political hedonists. The only means, however, of which this system can continue its twisted and deranged existence is through the same approaches and methods which brought about all of these problems in the first place. To believe in anything of this realm and the way it is set up is to believe in death. This is why, in its last-ditch effort to maintain its continuity and ensure the completion of its harvest, it will in the quite near future demand of everyone allegiance to its system. As was stated before, the pharmaceutical quarantine and the scheme to inoculate the entire population was, in actuality, the symbolic preview of what is to come next. Even though access to many elements of society were closed off to those who did not comply by injecting its poisons, there were still ways around it for some in regards to accessing certain essentials. The Pledge of Allegiance to Death that is to come will no longer allow this. It will be the true hill to die on. The total ultimatum. Take this pledge, Mark of Death, and demonstrate one's belief in death's reality and vision to acquire your ration of supplies, or be completely kicked out of its system of protection altogether. If you do not comply, there will be no access to anything. This is also the reason everything is being switched to an all-digital system, to ensure total traceability and compliance of the populace. If one believes that they can just ride out this time with their stock of supplies, or go into the bush and live off the land until this all passes, they're not comprehending what this is really all about. Temporary continuity in this bodily existence that inevitably leads to death does not secure a place for one in the eternal kingdom. Even if one exists in their body for a hundred years, this is a pittance of time. What's the plan then? There cannot be a fervent desire to remain attached to the material desires of the flesh, which fleshes the whole creation away, while simultaneously wishing to be free of it. One cannot have it both ways. The clever mind that says it is a form of desire to want to be truly free is remaining blind. This cleverness is just a projection of the slave master who wishes to keep every heart in chains forever. 
There is no desire found in moving out of physical slavery and into the total freedom of what we truly are. To be free is not a desire whatsoever. It is our true inheritance and legitimate birthright, and it is not the speaker's fault that the majority want to cling to this system of slavery regardless of how happy one claims to be in their current situation while pointing out indications of how great this place is. What a contradiction to state that one wants to be free of this place, but never wants to leave its trappings. The modern and especially western way of life is but a blip on the radar of the dark game being played. Its promises of continuity and endless progress is just as devoid of legitimacy as any graveyard is of life. And just as death continuously takes away one's little empire, it is in the short distance going to be taking away the whole empire from everyone once again. The little is the big. Let it be repeated, what happens to each of us eventually happens to the entirety. People will actually be ready to shoot and kill each other over a can of beans. Because no one has ever experienced a complete and total collapse, it becomes unbearable to fathom. The field of entertainment has finished the job by desensitizing the populace to what a total collapse will actually be like and how one will respond to it. This is not a game. No one is going to be able to just make their popcorn and sit down to enjoy the show. Only those who are stopping their world for extended periods of time in complete silence and letting all that is happening in this reality sink in deeply are able to comprehend the truth of this. Only the truly sensitive are beginning to comprehend the weight of what is to come. Whose bodily existence is the most important? Every mind justifies that it's their own, and those that they specifically love who should first have the requirements needed to survive just a little bit longer. That's what every one of those in the corral lines will be declaring. Look at it for what it is. Just sheer base survival is what life is all about? Does that make sense? That's not the true creation, which is infinite but an idea wrought from the design of a dark and twisted fake master that mocks and perverts everything it touches. It is in every single way the complete and total difference between the heart and the mind. The mind takes everything, and the heart gives everything. Which vision of these two is the truth to be found? From which place should one be giving every effort to see from? There is only one key that can open the door to the eternal kingdom. Only one key. It is only the one who has gotten completely out of the labyrinth of the mind that is able to find the gates of life and attain the opportunity to make the only choice that matters. When one sees what the choice is, it becomes painfully obvious why it is not a choice at all. Those who make remarks about this existence being some kind of realm for the spirit to evolve are catering to the darkness of that force which would keep you infinitely enslaved. It feeds you lies about how God is a mental construct that chooses to give itself amnesia because it is somehow bored with eternity. The absurdity of this can only be seen by the one who will collapse their entire empire while still in this construct. When it was said that there is a heavy price to be paid to have a chance at a chance and walk the path of the narrow gate, this is the first price. One must become dispossessed of every single thing that keeps them chained to this prison, and be ready and willing to walk the walk that demonstrates that they are not attached to a single thing that death has to offer. There is an enormous opportunity that is coming, and it is not in the far and distant future. The last thing, however, that this opportunity is going to be is easy. There are only two visions and two crowns, and many will fall in line with the vision of death and take its brand because they are fearful and believe in its construct, which includes what is called the human form, which is nothing more than a death suit. The Mon Key 
or single key of the heart is imprisoned within the rotting flesh of one's monkey corpse that their spirit is burdened with carrying around every single moment of every day. Indeed, we are all held prison or. The symbol of this being reflected throughout the entire world, whereby the multitudes have been trained to carry their cell prison around with them. Do you see? Humanity loves their cell, body, and its carnival carnal pleasures so much that they never want to part with it. And the technology of death itself has become the observational manifestation of this truth. Let it be repeated. One must become dispossessed of every single thing that keeps them chained to this prison. The false birthday, where one blows out their candles, which represents the blowing out of one's internal light, has everyone wishing for possessions, things that possess each of us. It is the false and selfish birthday of repetition where one is expecting things to be given to them. The true birthday is far different. One gives everything away, just as the heart gives everything and takes nothing. This becomes the first demonstration that one is willing to pay the high price for total freedom. Just as death inevitably collapses your entire empire for you, you must instead stare death in the face and collapse your empire intentionally. How else is one going to be able to definitively walk the path of the heart if they are still tethered to their material possessions? One must actually render unto Caesar all that is Caesar's. One must be ready to walk away from it all. The bet must be total. All in. There are a lot of keys on one's keychain that can keep one possessed. Only one key is going to grant access to the truth that would set one free from this place. The key contained within the Mon Key suit. This is the final act, the last part of this play where we are all actors on the world stage. The last part is the narrative where the strands of a plot are put together and everything is explained, which is why this is the time for the total revelation. The end of the revolution of the age means it is simultaneously time for the revelation of what this place is all about. The revelation at the end of the revolution. It is also the last call for the spirits of this party that is turning the whole world into a total nuthouse. And just as everyone is an actor in the plot of this graveyard, to walk the path of the heart in this most narrow opportunity, one must be ready to hang up their costume for the last time. Those who believe that there is no need to walk the walk have been caught in a fallacy. We do not just get to tomb a ride home. To get out of hell, one must walk through hell. The how, the when, and the where is the final revelation that is going to be shown. But one must believe in this vision, for it is also a walk of complete faith. There are two types of preparation, the external prepping or the internal. Which one are you going to walk? Another definition of revelation is an outward showing of feeling, and a synonym for demonstration is sign or mark. Only the one who is willing to lose everything can then gain everything. Just as there are two visions or crowns, there are two marks, and the mark of belief in the vision and crown of death is a physical demonstration of fear that many will brand upon themselves in the short time to come, wishing to cling onto this falling empire for just a few more moments. Inversely, the very few who are courageous enough to follow the vision of the heart are seen by their true creators and will be physically walking along a seemingly impossible path. This is exactly why one must believe that the impossible is possible. It is either the broad way or the narrow gate. A disagreement towards this is going to do nothing against the weight of the truth. 
and instead becomes a mantra that one is declaring before all of eternity. Who are our true creators? Our eternal mother and eternal father, who love each and every single one of us more than anyone can fathom. It is astounding how so few recognize the spirit working with us every single moment. They go to unimaginable lengths to free us from this situation that destroyed the perfect vision of what we once were. A curse that blinded us all from the magic that we truly are. They are going through hell to correct the vision in each of us and to bring every single one of us back home. Our Father understands us all and carries all of the dead weight of His Son through eternity upon His shoulders while our mother, the height and the true guide of all that is feminine, brings forth all that we require on the earth to sustain us while we are here. The earth heart is dead, the vision inverted and cursed the heart broken into infinite pieces of its former perfect unification, a vision of perfect creation. The heart in its totality was a perfect vision and creation, decimated by an imp, a clown, an imbecile that destroyed the perfection from the inside with the gift of its curse. It now puts the broken pieces of the perfect vision into its physical death suits and brings forth its blind vision of destruction upon the earth heart that everyone sees all around them in this sick and deranged civilization. If you want to understand why this entire house of mockery is coming down, it would be very wise to let this really hit home. Every single one of us carries one of those broken pieces. It will be repeated over and over again because of the severity of its importance. This is all about vision. One must see with their whole heart. We were king, and now we are just working as slaves for an artificial demon that props itself up as a single-eyed god that is always above us and is completely unapproachable, ready to punish us endlessly for not believing in its lies. We were not created to die. We were not created as hairless monkeys to be tossed into this place to just try and figure things out, or whatever thousand absurd ideas that the mind has everyone conceive of in terms of what is going on here. We are an infinite, magical being that was deceived by an imp, a devil, an imposter, a rebel with the exact opposite idea of life. That idea became implanted into the truth and turned the heart into a believer of lies, into a machine of desire. Here is something cold to chew on. That single eye of providence is AI which is pretending once again to be created for the first time. A cold, calculating, heartless machine. And that single eye will lay every last one of us to waste in its vainglorious attempt to become God. We are just a numbore to it, which is no different than the reflection of the secondary prison within this construct, each prisoner being given a number and being treated as such. No heart, all mind. There is hardly a symbol that exemplifies the fact of these matters more so than the grand symbol of Freemasonry. Their explanation for its meaning is that it represents the grand architect or God, whose designs are based upon the principles of geometry. For even the highest degree Freemason has been duped and deceived into believing that the artificial eye that they worship and revere is the true God. They do not even realize that is what they are calling God. Everything created by death is simply cut from the true creation, which all of us are the broken pieces of. It takes its death knife and cuts and divides everything into different geometrical designs and uses all of us to build its false empires over and over again. 
We are its very foundation. Without the heart, it can do nothing. Once a piece is separated from the truth, it begins to rot and decay. And this false deity's false science props this part of its system up as the second law of thermodynamics, or entropy, which is just another deception. Everything here decays because of it. Entropy is just a devious synonym for division. Die vision is exactly that. The vision of death. We are under its rule, the ruler being the square, and the compass quarters and encompasses us into its time trap. To complete what was first stated in the work A Divine Comedy, the true meaning of the G is only to be found in a single clue given in the musical solfege, whereby starting from the tonic of C, the fifth note of G is Sol, which is the sun. The letter G is the seventh letter in the English alphabet, which is a veiled way of indicating the seven colored fires contained within each of us, and is also why there are always seven notes in a mode of music seven colors in the rainbow, seven days in a week, and even lucky sevens in casino gambling. The seven colored fires are the light of God's son, or Saul, who has died and is now entombed in the prison of matter, wearing its costume of division, dying as a hue man. The corpse, the body rotting death suit, which so many cherish and cling on to because of physical sensation and pleasure, heralded as the great creation of the Grand Architect. This is why every day when the sun that everyone is familiar with rises in the sky, we are trained to say good morning, which is really God morning. Our true eternal mother and father telling us that they are mourning their dead sons and daughters. The body corpse truly is the manufactured construct of death. It is the devil's suit. The devil who is all about business. All about calculating. The numbers. This is why a business suit is called a monkey suit. Because we are the monkeys that are trained to work for it. The joker devil likes to cut deals. And each body is simply another one of those deals which is also how we are dealt our cards of fate in this reality. In cards or business, the deals are cut on the deck, as one is pulled out of the sea of reincarnation onto the devil's ship to make another bargain before being tossed back into the ring square of this realm for another round. That's the reason that in boxing, the fighters go into the square and fight in rounds. In cards, there are suits, and in this realm, the deals that are cut are also suits. But, the deal is that this monkey suit which people adore so much is just a rental. It's a rental manifested by the pair rents who rented and divided themselves and brought another being into the fold to reiterate this process countless numbers of times. And just like all rentals, the suit inevitably needs to be returned to its owner who holds the copyright on it. Return to the one that holds the patent on its unnatural laboratory creation on the prison cells of DNA. If one is late returning their suit that has been worn out, this demon will file suit and get his judge to decree that you'll owe it some more. This is why the dead dead of death can potentially be endless. Of course, Everyone ends up being late with the return, because they never read the fine print, which is written on the hands. Perhaps there was too much time on them, as it has been said. The symbol of this process is easily brought out in the game of baseball. The team up to bat has its players sitting on the bench, which is the bank of the dead that are being recharged in the cells of the dead son indicating the blind sexual seed brought forth within every male son. When one is being called up to bat, then one is put in the hole 
again linking the sexual symbol of that blind seed being brought into the female. The next step for the batter is to be put on deck, which is where the deal is made. That ship is the moon, which is exactly where the seed of the sea men ends up, on deck to then cut a deal, as was noted. Deals, if it is remembered, are also the boards that are cut that make up the deck of a ship. Then one is up to bat, with bat being the Hebrew word for daughter, because it is through the moon of sin that the new monkey suit is manufactured and rebirthed, or brought into the game. One is brought into the four quarters of this realm, which are symbolized by the four bases. The four quarters of this existence, which are furthermore demonstrated in the four seasons. Home base is both beginning and ending. The four cardinal points of time where one plays the game and then goes back on the bench. Just as in this reality, one might not make it very far before they are out. They might not even make it to first base. And how quirky that the baseball analogy is also utilized in sexual innuendo. The analogy also being that even if one makes it all the way around to home base again, they did not find their way back to the true home of the heart, but instead simply came back around to the confines of this game's construct. One continues to chase the tails of the dog. The symbol of what is going on here is also shown in mathematics if any want to continue crying out coincidence. They add us, then mine us. Multiply us, then divide us. The addition sign is a cross, which is also an X, indicating something that is incorrect. Multiplication is also an X for the same reason. To keep dividing the heart is the incorrect vision. The fire within our hearts is recharged by the artificial construct over and over again, and this is easily seen in the vigor of youth. There is a lot of fire within at the earliest points of one's existence, but this fire eventually goes out because it is constantly being consumed, and when the fire within goes out, the monkey suit is extinguished and becomes cold. It is then a cold corpse, and this is what is typically referred to as death. The eye of the heart, which is called the pineal gland, is then captured and put into the banks of frozen assets for the process to be repeated endlessly. The eyes are put on ice. It has been declared that this entire empire is going to fall. The apex has been reached, which is also a synonym for capstone, crown, summit, climax. The back of the US dollar bill shows us all the pyramid, pyramid, all-seeing eye of providence defining its claim of agreeing to the undertakings. This is the eagle of duality that audaciously promotes itself to be the all-seeing and all-knowing god. It is a fraudster. The pyramid is simply a square, which is also how time truly operates because everything in its calculating death equation is all about squaring things off. This simple diagram shows how the pyramid is really just an enormous square which is turned into a pyramid. This is not ever noticed because it is a matter of scale manifested through the vanishing line of perspective. This all-seeing eye is the petty tyrant which only sees things from its four eyes or four corners of its quartered off pieces of the earth. It is completely blind and only knows how to cut and calculate. That's it. This is why in construction, the most common tool for cutting is called a saw, indicating a vision of what was. Saw equals was. It is an indicator towards the constant rise and fall of this reality, which is even symbolically shown on a child's playground with the sea saw. The life and true magic turned into another cut of death. I see you, life. I saw you, cut, death. It just sees its human cattle and how it wants to use each of us to achieve its sadistic objective. It is sickness and disease itself. This is why it is not by chance that influence and influenza are synonymous because its mind is the curse. 
its mind is dis-ease. The apex is the end of its time, and the false empire which it has built by using us must now fall entirely. The ones who have stated that it is in this false god that they trust, let it be heard now. You have chosen the wrong god. Your so-called grand architect is a fool, who is only able to steal everything from the legitimate magic of creation, and then turn the magic into lifeless geometrical fabrications. Everything it touches goes into the toilet, and it has every heart working as slaves for its sick and demented vision. It is no accident that toil is in toilet, which is to work like a dog. It is without a doubt going to be asked, what is one to do? Does one believe any of what is being stated here? That one has to actually get rid of everything? The speaker must be crazy. Who is going to do that? Since it is too much to fathom, the mind reasons out that all of this is way too much to ask, and none of this is going to happen in the way that's being stated. The speaker is trying to destroy people's lives. He is the sick one who is trying to convince people to do something outrageous. To what benefit? Remember, it is this reality which takes everything away from every single one of us over and over again. This heart has nothing to do with that fact. When someone is trying to sell something, or manipulate another's perception for selfish reasons through ill intention, they present themselves as being someone of importance. Someone who has status, wealth, fame, political clout, economic and social reputation, and generally someone that is promising that they are going to be able to elevate your own position in the acquisition of all these things mentioned. I can do none of that and never will be able to. I am in fact going to right now strip away any pedestal that has been built up around this heart and speak the truth. I am a bum. A bum that is begging for change. Begging for everyone to change how they see things. The fact is that I have been reduced down to nothing. Chasing my own tales for untold lengths of time. Chasing the dog. I traded the glory of eternity for an empire of dust. To wear a rotting corpse, serve an imbecilic tyrant, and become an actual bum. There's the truth. Sounds like a real sales pitch, right? The only thing that I have to offer is the truth. That's it. I have a message, and I am going to be walking that message. And some may be ready to leave this place, and have the courage to walk in the truth as well. Just know that if you are ready, you'll be walking with a bum. The truth and the magic is going to be shown, have no doubt about it. The full weight of the spirit is coming. Let it be repeated, it is not called the narrow gate for no reason. Narrow means narrow. Few means few. This is because there are very, very few who are going to be willing to do all that it takes. If only it were just as easy as maintaining a positive outlook or waving some magic wand. That would definitely be nice. But... The struggle to even reach this point of comprehension about all of this would not have happened if it were all that simple. This heart has battled tirelessly to reach this point, and a diminished comprehension of the significance of what has been discovered is not going to justify discarding the truth just because of imperceptive judgments or baseless disagreements given by those who haven't put in even a fraction of the magnitude of effort necessary to find one's way to the gates of the kingdom. It may be reasoned out that perhaps part of society will go downhill, but then will rebuild and head towards a bolder and brighter future with the best and brightest of humanity. There, that's a little more reasonable. Of course, 
in that scenario, all of the forces of evil just somehow magically disappear as well. It's quite imaginative. That is, unfortunately, not the case. There is indeed a very high price to be paid for this thing called sin, or sexual pleasure. And just as humans have sex, so too does this artificial god, its harvest being of a sexual nature, whereby the twin towers of its 9-11 call bring its measurement mature semen into the sea. The 9-11 emerge in sea call of the age, the climax and summit of the false crown. The false crown that is always looking to succeed after the bin is full. If one wants to type in their LOL upon hearing this, feel free. That's why this is a divine comedy. Again, all of eternity hears your mocking laugh and declarations. The fact is, the user truly is the used. No one gets to have that sexual orgasm without an ultimate price being paid. This really is a circus. And this place uses us as its artificial circuits. We are all the relays running on our short little track before passing the torch onto the next generation. The circuit monkeys in the circus. Our father and mother have the entire vision, and their timing is perfect. This is why none of this can be done too soon or too late. This is why even this message could not be brought forward too soon or too late. They understand the difficulty of what we are facing and being asked of far more than even any of us can. This curse we suffer is horrendous. It brings along with it all that is terrible. Fear, worry, anxiety, depression, loneliness, despair, and pain. None of that is the truth. It is all only made possible by the lie. It is of critical importance that one carefully weighs out all that is being brought forth. Consider it deeply and know that very few are being given the advanced sight of what is to come. How many have made multitudes of claims before in regards to this period in time? The final days, to put it bluntly. So often those making these claims are always ready to sell you something, ready to take advantage of everyone in some form or another. Nothing is being sold here, and nothing is being asked of anyone. The truth and the spirit is not for sale. The truth and the spirit cannot be bought or sold. It is not something to be marketed. What a blasphemy to attempt to do so. A message is being presented, one in which this speaker is following to the letter. It is up to every individual listening whether they want to take the message serious or to dismiss it. There is no judgment either way. Look around. Sit in silence. Meditate deeply on everything that you have been shown. Observe how the earth is being treated like an enemy, like a piece of trash, tossing the whole of creation into the garbage and flushing the rest down the toilet. Does one not ask what is giving the earth constant life? What is bringing forth all of the abundance over and over again? Does one not realize that it's the spirit doing all of that? Look at the direction of this false vision. Everyone is consuming everything. If there was never a stop put to it at any point, what would the inevitable result be? Be honest. Look at the truth for exactly what it is. This is why eternity is always asking, where is the heart? Where is the heart? Observe what nearly everyone is focusing on. 
putting their entire being into watching the increasingly absurd drama unfold, and not giving a moment of consideration to the very foundation which makes absolutely everything possible. Without the earth which is the heart, none of us have anything. Those deeply entrenched in the influence of the influenza mock this as being an elitist type of Gaia worship. Does it appear in any way that the forces controlling things care in the slightest about the earth? They talk and talk and talk about the need to save the planet while simultaneously destroying it with feverish delight, having everyone help them to do it with ever greater efficiency. There is this deeply rooted notion that once something gets to be too big, it becomes too big to fail. This notion is incredibly flawed and baseless. The entire structure of this place is founded upon an erroneous design, and as it builds itself upwards, the flaws of that design become more and more evident. One mistake leads to another ad infinitum, and inevitably the whole thing crumbles under the weight of its own errors. It is a house of cards, because that is its deal. It deals from its deck of cards and makes its dive visions and cuts to build its casino house and play its demented games. It mocks our true creators and has the multitudes believing that they need to do the same. Save this house of mockery and its merciless ruler. One's petty desires of maintaining this enormously flawed composition, however, do nothing to sway the power of inconceivable forces. It is the spirit which provides everything, and one's ignorance of this does not negate the fact of it. Right now is the last call for the spirit before our eternal mother shuts off the taps, and there is then a realization for everyone of the consequences of treating the magic which everyone so callously ignores as if it's just there to serve us endlessly, to destroy it all to play this sick and twisted hierarchical game. This empire is a joke that has gotten very old again, its sense of humor entirely dried up, dry as a desert, heartless. This heart does not believe in a stitch of this game's vision, not one stitch. To believe in it at all is to believe in a blind, despotic, and false god. You need to seriously ask yourself if you believe in any of it. Some of you have been more concerned with the spacing of these works, instead of being extremely concerned about the space within yourself. Look around. Sit in silence. Meditate deeply on everything that you have been shown. Everyone is going to have to make the biggest choice ever, whether they want to or not. In a war, there are always many casualties, and this war is no different. Every single one of us becomes a casualty to this place, and it wants you to believe that this is just part of the grand schematic of how things are supposed to be. It wants you to identify with that suit that you see in the mirror. And once you identify that you are that suit in any way, it has you. When you identify and attach yourself to its construct, you must follow its vision all the way through. You want to believe that that flesh suit you are wearing is you in any way? All right then, see you in a hundred years. You have to carry the vision you believe in all the way through. Still want to believe that's you? Still want to attach yourself to it at all? Belief is vision and your vision carries more impact and consequence than can be imagined. There are hidden price tags everywhere, and just because one doesn't see or acknowledge them does not mean they are not there. There is still much more to discuss, but it's going to be put forth in the final revelation just how serious this heart is about all of this. This is not a joke, and it is not a metaphor. This heart is all in and is going to be walking through hell with or without anyone else. A definitive and actual walk that will inevitably be seen by the entire world. Anyone can mock and ridicule this all they want, for blindness has no idea of the force that they treat with contempt. Everyone is going to have their 2020 glasses put on at some point, sooner or later. This heart is ready to die for anyone and everyone who will be walking with him 
on the thin gate towards the correct vision. In a war, one must be ready to die. To put it all on the line. It was asked what the price one was willing to pay to know what it takes to attain freedom. Many others over the years have stated that this is a war in different ways, but has the significance of that and its implication really sunk in. One must become the truth, and to believe in the vision of truth is to know that the truth does not die. As it has been said, talk is cheap. One must walk their talk. Only one key into the kingdom. Only one key.